Today we're going to deconstruct a scene from Skyfall. This is a scene where Bond follows a villain into a high rise and a, the scene keep and the scene takes place in darkness and reflections. Roger, originally this scene wasn't going to be a set, right? Well, I, I think the original idea was to shoot in Shanghai because we were going to go and shoot certain scenes for the film in Shanghai. And um, that was the idea when I came onto it. Um, they, they, they scouted Shanghai. I say they, it was a Sam and the Barbara and, the, and Dennis Gassner, the production designer. They'd already scouted a number of places and they've sort of chosen Shanghai and they looked at this certain office building with a view out of the city and they looked at the back lot because there was um, a casino already built there as a set on the back lot. And um, then there was a temple on a lake that we were going to use as the, um, the casino exterior. And when I came onto it, they were talking about this and I saw the location photographs and stuff and I said, well, I think I should go and have a look. And I went by myself to Shanghai um, to look at these places. Mainly, I didn't go to the studio, I didn't think. I mainly looked at this tower block um, because I was really concerned that it was like, you know, I think it was 25 floors up or something. And, and I thought it was really restrictive. I was not really happy with the idea of shooting now. I didn't know how to do it. So I'm standing there with... Um, a representative in Shanghai, the location department. I think, well, how's this going to work? It's basically a small office and it looks out onto the city, but at night you couldn't actually see. I mean, Shanghai is very famous for its huge, great uh, signs, you know, advertising signs that are really bright at night, but they all face onto the river. So if you're in the Bund, which is the opposite side of the river to the modern city, you look back, it's stunning, these huge great LEDs and all the kind of changing lights, but you couldn't see them from this other, this office building that was available. And then there was um, um, a lift shaft in another office building that we're thinking of using, which was fine. Um, but when I got back to Pinewood, I thought, I want to talk with Dennis Gasser about this because it, it doesn't really, I don't, I don't know how you're really going to get the full effect. And it's, it seemed very restricting. So Dennis and I just sat talking about it for a, a long time. And I, 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 I don't know if I suggested doing it as a set, you know, <clears throat> at, at Pinewood in the R7 stage. And, uh, yeah, but I didn't want to talk to Sam or the producers because I thought I don't want to throw a spoke in the wheel sort of thing until there's a, a, a concrete idea. Yeah, plan. And then we talked to Sam about it and said, well, you know, this, we would be able to do a lot more. We could build a set. We don't need the whole of the O7 stage. We could, you know, do it in a certain way. And then it just evolved. And what happened that really pushed us to doing it as a set was that there was a um, typhoon struck um, Shanghai and it blew down this casino set that we were going to shoot in. So this standing set that would have saved us a lot of money mm. disappeared. Um, one of the locations we were going to use, which was this whole canal system, disappeared from the script. So there was less kind of pressure to go to Shanghai and shoot. Mm -hmm. So it ended up we shot some plates and, and um, some drive-bys, mainly plates in Shanghai, and did everything else at Pinewood. So the exterior of the casino, um, Dennis built as a two-dimensional, basically flat with lights on it, mm. on the pond at the back of mm -hmm. Pinewood. And then we, we built, I say, this, this, the scene in the office block, we built on the O7 stage. And what we did, we made a kind of eight by four model and, and it just evolved. And I said, well, if we're doing this, we don't need solid balls. 
What if it's all glass? You know, it's a modern office building. Because originally glass. it wasn't about the glass and the reflections. No, it was about the view out the window. Yeah, it was, just, it was just about the view out the window. Mm -hmm. but that was only one angle, and you know, you're going to be shooting reverse, you're mm -hmm. going to shoot side shots, and there's all this thing about. Sam wanted a confusion about where the shooter was, mm -hmm. and he wanted. You know, you, you know, you wanted some mystery to it. Mm -hmm. So the idea of this glass, and then a lot of reflections from the LEDs, the signs, mm -hmm. advertising signs outside the windows of the offices. I mean, it was a it was a hell of a construction thing because to construct this glass set mm -hmm. that was safe, but yeah. there was also that we could move glass panels and shoot. Right. and have floating glass panels to change the reflections mm -hmm. while we were shooting. That was a huge engineering thing for Dennis and his team to overcome. But and did you have to figure out what all the shots were ahead of time so he knew where, where glass had to move? Uh, we, we mapped out, uh, Sam and Dennis and I, and we mapped out a route that Mm -hmm. Bond was going to take and where the shooter was going to be, mm -hmm. where the hotel room was across the way in the next building. Mm -hmm. So all that had to be worked out in terms of the space we had available on stage and, and that whole journey. And then we figured, well, we want a big, we need a big screen here, the LED screen here, and we need one over here and a small one there. And then the others can be we could put up signs and then the, the hotel window would be lit and the other rooms would be defined in some way. And then we put a trans light, you know, a big slide, mm -hmm. picture of the, of the city in the far corner of the stage. So you, it looked like there was a road and more buildings mm -hmm. going away into the distance. Mm -hmm. So all that was basically done in camera. And then we realized, well, to make the traffic move, there had to be some CG on top of it. But everything else was in camera. I think people don't realize that, that all those no, reflections everyone, yeah. and everything were all done in camera, yeah, yeah. which was a huge endeavor. It was. I mean, I think Dennis, Dennis and the art department did a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And then it was a matter of design, designing what was going to be on them, right. what colors they were. Right. So on this model that we made, the art department made, <clears throat> we used a couple of little um, iPads. Mm -hmm. Um, and then played back different images to get a sense of what it would look like mm. on the glass, you mm. know, with a little lipstick camera. You could get a sense of what what would happen. And then it was a matter of, yes, what we were going to, what screens we could get, because at that time there weren't that many big LED screens. That's right. We got, I wanted one that was good definition for where the main. Um, confrontation yeah. would take place between Bond and the shooter and where, where they fall over the edge. So we got one from a rock and roll company that hired um, we got one from a company that rented out LED screens for rock and roll shows mm -hmm. you know, and it was available for a certain time so we got that I forget its definition but it was quite quite good resolution mm -hmm. I mean now you can get all sorts of things and then the other one is made up of panels of um, LED strips that make up a big screen. Right, it was right. a much, much lower resolution. Mm -hmm. But I quite liked that because it felt like it was near and you could see, literally see the pixels of each, yeah, yeah. The, the bulbs of each. Yeah. Um, it was also um, our second time working with, on digital, working with the Alexa. Yeah. So we did a lot of testing on that for color rendition because we didn't know at that point, and so we yeah. took the LEDs and ran some tests to make sure that yeah. the colors were what we yeah. thought they would be. Yeah, but I think that you could have shot that on film, but it would have been pushing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there wasn't a lot of light there. No. Those screens were not that bright. Yeah. You know, when they were quite far away, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the main one, I forget now, was probably, was it 40, 50 feet from, 50 feet mm -hmm. from the set maybe, and mm -hmm. it was a pretty big screen, but it wasn't very bright. And then <laughs> there's that wonderful story about what was on the main yeah, screen. Yeah, well, it was, really, it was really interesting because um, the art department had put on a temporary playback 
on this one iPad. And it was these, test, yeah. there was these jellyfish just kind of, which... That they got off the internet. Got off the internet, which had nothing to do with anything. And it got right down to the wire. We talked about the other one, which would be an advert, and would have these lips and very sort of oriental type modern advert that was based on, you know, things that exist. But then what was going to happen on the main screen? And Sam and I got so used to the jellyfish, we said, well... <laughs> <laughs> we were in love with the jellyfish. Yeah. And it's so odd. So they had, to get, yeah, they had to get the rights for the jellyfish, <laughs> you know, which is great. You know. <laughs> and sometimes in the scene, there are double reflections. It's not just the reflections of him, but then there's also a reflection of an LED. So how did you work out? Exactly? Well, it didn't. You just knew that if you have these glass panels and they're all parallel to each other, the screen's going to come on here and it's going to reflect back there and go over there. You know, it was just like we knew we would get a whole collage of reflections, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's always a scene in a Bond movie which is about reflections and the, some of the original Bond movies, they'd go into a carnival and you'd see this hall of mirrors, right? <laughs> so it's just a kind of riff on that, really. <laughs> How can you up that? Yeah, well, we'll have, we'll have everything's it. glass, right? Yeah, exactly. So everything's glass and there's reflections everywhere. <laughs> I was more worried about us, I mean, yeah, the I camera know. crew, I mean, how are we going to shoot it? Yeah. And then really you think, well, yeah, but there's not that much light. Yeah. You know, it's whatever the lighting me is not doing much on, in terms of reflecting and back off the glass. Everybody wore black that day. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And everybody was, I was a lot of remote camera work, yes. you know. As and, much as um, we could, yeah. But basically, it's all lit with what you see in the shot. Mm -hmm. Now and again, I did have, I did have little. Um, uh, I had some fluorescents and, and some LED strips that we'd just do a little extra light here and there, but it wasn't much, not much at all. Yeah. And then, the scene with Bond and the villain is very dark and, and blues. And then when we look across to the hotel room, yeah. it's supposed to across the way, that's a very warm look, yeah. which you did on purpose. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to contrast it. And, you know, the, the girl wanted to look, you know, as spectacular as possible, you know, <laughs> exotic, and the guy looking at this, you know, fabulous, expensive painting. And yeah, so we wanted to look more exotic. And uh, so, yeah, to contrast it, that's why we, Partly why we like, I mean, not only the jellyfish, but we like the blue, we like the colour. Mm -hmm. you know, and then, uh, yeah, contrasted with the warmth of the hotel room. The hotel room is, we wished it was further away, but it's not bad. Only really. so much space. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of the set was false perspective. So mm -hmm. some of the buildings going beyond the hotel room go into false perspective. And they're 3D, but they're smaller than they, you know. And, uh, I think the hotel room was a bit smaller than it, or the building, you know, even though the characters are obviously right through size because they're the actors, but it was all a little bit stretched, you know, <laughs> to make it feel as real as possible. But I mean, what you get, the advantage you get, and it was obvious from looking at the model, the advantage you get from building it and having control over what was on the screens, you know, what the advert was, how it's playing back. Because if we had done it in for real, whatever there was behind us in Shanghai, it would have been, yeah. you wouldn't have been able to control the timing of anything or whatever, right, you know, yeah. or the colour or anything. So um, to have that control on a scene that was quite complex was, was a real bonus. And, you know, we shot it very quickly. We shot mm -hmm. it in a few days. Yeah, it really I did. I mean, we had a lot of prep time and lighting time once we mm -hmm. set it and you know it was being lit while it was being built and mm. we could go in there in the evening after a shoot day doing something else and say well let's put some tubes here where it looks like it's a parking structure and, and then let's put something up light in here just to define that wall and it was mm. all built over built up over you know a week or two mm. Mm. and and the good thing about shooting digitally for that on that very very tricky scene is we could see right away you didn't have to wait till the next day yeah, to see well, dailies. Like that. You don't have the stress of that. Yeah. But that would have been incredibly yeah, stressful yeah, yeah. for that. Because we yeah. were right on the edge. It's very dark. It was. And we were shooting wide open for us. Yeah. You know, 800 and, wide open, one four. Yeah. And how...
did you do that with such darkness and yet you can still basically see, you can see Bond or you have a silhouette and, and it's dark, but you still see the silhouette. You, you know, you're not aware of additional lighting for that. Well, it wasn't, you know, again, yeah. I was getting the playback and getting the balance of the playback, getting mm -hmm. the highlights in the playback, getting the highlights of the jellyfish bright against the blue of the overall right. background of the jellyfish. Yeah. So even if it wasn't in frame, you were using Oh all yeah, those yeah. LEDs that, that weren't moving anyway. You were looking side on, yeah. and I could bring up the light on that mm -hmm. screen, so the blue was a bit more intense mm -hmm. on a side shot, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But it was great, also because because we weren't in Shanghai and doing that as a set. Then mm -hmm. all the preamble, where Bond stakes out the building and goes up the mm -hmm. elevator, and and then up through the um, shaft, up the, the lift shaft. Mm -hmm that could all be controlled as well. I mean, part of it was shot in an office building outside Liverpool Street Station in mm -hmm. London. And um, we totally lit it with, you know, fluorescent strips and stuff. And then, but then the, to have control over the scene where Bond's going up the elevator, Dennis built a set for that with a couple of elevators. And then that was extended CG. And that mm -hmm. was the only, real CG work done on the whole sequence mm. was extending the elevator shaft because mm. we basically had one shaft and where Bond was, mm -hmm. you know, and the floor and the elevators, but we didn't have the roof and we didn't have the whole wide shaft. Mm. But again, we shot the main element and lit it and that was a matter of then, then you know, CG just expanding that shot and matching it. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. So there was, a, there was a huge advantage of, of staying staying uh, in Shepparton and in Pima to do that rather than being in Shanghai. I think um, it would have been a very different scene if you had shot it in Shanghai. I think it oh, would yeah, have been, been a lot different. less graphic and uh, I mean I think you really went for it. I mean you started with jellyfish and then you went yeah, no, way it was, to it style. Was, well, it's, it's interesting <laughs> how things just evolve. I yeah. mean, that, that could have been, yeah, I think it could have been dark and moody, but it could have been a very normal office building without a lot of glass. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it would have been like, really. Not that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what was it fun shooting something that was so stylized that you could really go for it? You you didn't have to worry about uh, where is there a lamp over there by that table, so that's that how much light you get on to him. Yeah, you I mean, just it was, go. Let's make a blue. It was stylized, but I mean, I always felt I wanted it to stay realistic. Yeah, well, it was realistic if yeah. you go for big jellyfish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, again, if you go Shanghai <laughs> and look at the buildings from the Bund and that, mm -hmm. I mean, it's really spectacular and it's, it's more exotic than that set. It's mm -hmm. bigger, obviously, and everything, but, um, you know, so you have that in mind. You want something that, that's going to replicate that, that it's not exactly replicated, rather, but it's going to be something equivalent to that and mm -hmm. um, yeah it just shows that you sometimes can do it better when you don't go to the real location actually <laughs> you know just it's just a matter of that that matter of control on a scene like yeah that, you know yeah um, it's very hard to control the 85th floor of a sky oh yeah and then i mean you know doing it <laughs> of a skyscraper skyscraper mm -hmm. and then doing it at night as well on location and all the troubles that brings mm -hmm. you know oh yeah. yeah yeah and even shanghai a certain time at night the lights go out so oh really <laughs> well you get all that the city lights start going out you know ours oh, never went out you know, and we can we shoot during the day jellyfishes all day long. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, you know, there's a lot of attraction shooting on location. I, I kind of like it, but something like that, I was really glad when everybody said, oh yeah, okay, let's do it on the bomb stage. Yeah, yeah. And it did allow you to really figure out the reflections and figure out what needed to be pulled or angled this way, because yeah. you can't really do that well, on again, location. Well, again, I mean, how could I have prepped it in Shanghai? You know, you yeah. wouldn't get really mm. much prep time. Mm -hmm. You could, you know, do a diagram and ask mm -hmm. you the local gaffer that you presumably get in Shanghai mm. to do what you wanted. But I mean, then you'd walk in and probably have hardly any time to control it. It was the same with the casino exterior. 
I mean, there was this monastery that was stunning and this lake. Mm -hmm. But you think, well, I've got to light that for night. So what are we going to do? Well, we'd have done the same thing we did on the back lot in Pinewood, which was, you know, basically Huge. surround mm -hmm. the building with festoons of bare mm -hmm. bulbs. So it felt like a, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, what else do you do? You put lights on it so it's practical. The practical is lighted. Mm -hmm. And we'd have had to have done this on this monastery on this island, which would have been quite some task, really. Yeah. And then we'd have still, you know, the idea was all these floating lights in the lake. Mm -hmm. Well, to do them on location instead of the back lot in Pinewood would have been, wow, well, that would have been something. Because they're all electronic, you know, they're yeah. all gags. Yeah. Although I think there were 300 of them, yeah. you know, and then they were digitally extended. Mm -hmm. but I mean, to do that on a, on a real lake and then shoot it with a boat and you would have to get a crane on another boat to be able to get the shots we had. Whereas on the tank on the back lot we could build a we had built a huge scabble rig, right? right? And we put this the uh, biggest technocrane there is, this hundred hundred foot technocrane that don't, I don't think exists now. But it did for a while. We were the first to use it. But we could <laughs> use that and we could crane out over the over the pond mm -hmm. the lake to shoot all these shots without actually having a ring on the water in it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a trade-off. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Then we needed fireworks. Well, with the whole pine where we could set fireworks <laughs> up. Where were we going to do them on, on, on a lake that's, you know, like a mile square? Yeah. And boats everywhere. <laughs> it could have been a huge... Oh, I mean, it would just been huge, but what were you got for being there? I don't know. Mm. You know. Well, it sounds like in the end it was um, it was a blessing to be oh, able well, to I do think, it. I yeah. think so. It, it really, much as I liked the experience of Shanghai, I'm glad we did it that way. Mm. And it was a wonderful scene. I mean, it, it's a wonderful, um, very visual scene, so mm. it's great. Mm. You did good. <laughs>